Now let's take a look at question five on the practice exam. Okay, so it is a, a question about solving the tangent problem for a curve. So it says consider the tangent line to the curve given by blah blah blah. So it's y equals 2x cubed minus 1 at the point 2 comma 15. And let me just kind of try to draw a picture of this. So it's not going to be very helpful, but it might make it less scary somehow. Um, so it basically looks like this. Okay, and you know, all right. Um, all right, and so what are we doing here? They're picking a number. What happens at 1? One, 1, this thing is positive. Okay, so 2 is going to be somewhere like here, and what we're trying to do is find the slope of this tangent line at x equals 2. And so this will be the line uh, the tangent line will touch the curve exactly at the point 2 comma 15. So we did this a lot right after class first started. This is so how do we how do we solve it? This is where we do dy dx. Right? We want to do dy dx. And so let me remind you that once we figure things out dy is d dy is going to be like the, the rise of this little triangle. Okay, so the triangle goes from the uh, from the tangent point over and just goes up to the curve, and so what this ends up being dy, okay, and if you think about it, dy is always equal to f of, oh, I almost said x, but we know that x is 2 here, Okay, so what we have is x, this is dx. This is just some little amount that we pick. dx is just some little amount that we pick. So it's f of 2 plus dx minus f of 2. Okay, and if we could draw this thing all the way down to the x-axis, it would just be this, this big stick here. Um, take away this little stick that comes from here. Okay, so that's geometrically what it means, and so that gives you dy. All right. Um, okay, and so we actually know what the function is. So here's the function. So we can say a little bit better what dy is, right, by by expanding things. So for this f of 2 plus dx, I can just plug it in here. So this is really 2 times uh, 2 plus dx cubed, okay, minus 1. And I've also got this thing to worry about. So this is just plugging 2 into the function. So what is that? That's um, 2 times 2 cubed is 8 minus 1. This is 15. Okay, that's 15. Uh, right. Okay. Um, and all right, so I can't forget about my f, my f2. So I have minus 15 here. Okay. Uh, Alright, so now I have to just stop randomly eating the characters with my weird pen, and I need to, you know, I am waiting for some miracle to happen where everything without a dx in it gets cancelled so that I can figure out dy dx by cancelling dx. And to get there, I have to expand this cube, and you can do it any way you want, but um, I'm going to use this formula that I happen to know. And the formula is, and I'll give this to you on the test if you want or whatever. So a plus b cubed. So the formula for that is a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3a b squared plus b cubed. So I'm just going to follow that rule in here. And so that gives me 2 cubed is 8 plus 3 times um, 2 squared is 12, and now I've got a little dx, and I've got 3 times 2 is 6, and now b is squared, so I've got a little dx squared here, and this is giving me a dx cubed here on the end. Okay, and you can see that this last little tail part just amounts to minus 16. Okay, and so... Jeez, I hate that. Uh, all right, 
and okay so what now now I just need to bring in the two okay so the two is gonna go in and hit all of its friends so what happens that makes uh, 16 plus 24 DX uh, plus 12 DX squared plus 2 DX cubed and I've still got just minus 16 there on the end and now the cancellation miracle has finally occurred so here's the 16 that has no DX magically cancels with a 16 on the end okay and so remember that what all this stuff amounts to is dy so what I have here now is dy over dx is equal to I could just take all this good stuff here in the middle so it is 24 dx plus 12 dx squared plus 2 dx cubed all over dx and remember we've done this kind of so what now the thing to do now is to cancel so I cancel dx with dx and you know we're gonna lose this is gonna become a 1 and we're gonna strike here and this is kind of gonna become a 2 okay so we canceled a bunch of stuff and let me just rewrite here what happened so now I have 24 plus 12 dx so one of them survived because there was a square and on the end I have 2 times uh, dx squared so two of them survived because it was a cube alright and now there are two ways you know the thing to do is just to conclude that the answer is 24 and remember I said in class several times there's kind of a sick obsession with what justifies getting rid of these dx's so one way to think of it is that the whole thing the slope of the tangent line should be defined as the limit of dy dx as dx goes to zero okay so what we could do now is just take the limit of this expression as dx goes to zero and you can immediately see that it's 24 the other thing to do is to imagine that dx is some infinitesimally small quantity and so then the answer that we got is just kind of infinitely close to 24 Either way, 24 is the answer. So that is uh, part A. And now, what's the equation for this line? So this is the really, this is kind of dumb. Okay, so we did this in class a few times too. It's not worth very many points. Um, so because think about what we're asking here. We have 24, this is the slope. And we also have a point, right? Uh, the point on the curve that we're interested in, I think it's 2 comma 15. Let's just go up, back up here to the picture. So see here it is. It's the uh, it's this point on the curve is 2 comma 15. And so all this question part B is asking is, give me the equation for a line of slope 24 that goes through this point. And that answering that question is exactly what the point slope form of a line does. Let me remind you the point-slope form of a line is exactly for these situations where you know a point and a slope and you want to get an equation. So, sorry, it's x minus x1. Okay, and of course 2 is x1 and 15 is y1. Okay, and so let's just figure out what we've got here. So y minus 15 is equal to 24 times x minus 2. Okay, and now we just fool around with it. You can even leave it like that if you want. So y is equal to 24x minus, so that goes in there, and this gives me minus 48, and then I add 15 to both sides, so plus 15, and now I have to do arithmetic in my brain, which is always dangerous. So I take, this becomes what, 33, so minus 33. And that's it, that's it. That's the equation for the line, so um, great. Did I do everything? I did it all, it's done, excellent.